Welcome to Skill-Based Art, a learning resource for art students and artist teachers. My name is Pilar de la Torre and today I will be giving a demonstration on painting a portrait sketch directly from life. Portrait painting is a rich tradition of Western art that has been used to record the image and appearance of sitters since Greco-Roman times. For this demonstration, I will be using a limited palette a la prima approach to capture the likeness of the sitter. I will use comparative measurement as well as some site size measurement. A la prima is a direct approach to painting. The method requires the artist to paint wet layers into wet layers of paint, all in the one sitting. This approach differs from the direct method, which requires each layer to be dry before any successive layers are applied. Consequently, the alla prima approach can be a challenge, as with each layer of paint, one runs the risk of paint mixing with the previous layers and thus creating a muddy colour. As for my materials, I will be using titanium white, yellow ochre, terra rosa, cobalt blue, and I will also add black ivory black only mainly because with this limited palette of blue with the cobalt blue I can't really get my darkest darks which I know are going to be part of the design. Regarding my procedure I will begin by creating a block in of the portrait with a neutral mixture of cobalt blue and terra rosa. I will consider the design by placing some drawing marks with no detail, dividing the shadow and light shapes, and this will act as an underpainting or an underdrawing really. Next, I will establish the tonal relationships of light and dark patterns. Once the tonal masses have been established, I will add additional layers of colour to more accurately render the shapes that create the features of the portrait. Okay, so other materials that I use as I am working will be a viewfinder. I also may use a mirror to check the shapes and I may use the tonal mirror or the black mirror to check the tones but I may not use it as well. Depends on how I'm feeling about how the portrait is proceeding. Uh, I use a palette knife not for mixing but mainly just for getting out paint and um, scraping it off my palette. I have brushes that are either going to be a synthetic small brush mainly for a few drawing marks or finer details um, and I mainly use bristle brushes uh, and I can use anything from a square to a filbert to a round depending on what that shape may be and how I want to manipulate it The other important bit is this, which is basically a measuring. So if I have something that's light out there, I could use the dark end. If I have something that's dark out there, I can use the light end, especially made by Paul McDonald Smith for me. <laughs> and of course we have cleaning. You know, um, I always have a little bit of a 
bit of paper with my brushes if I need to clean off something from my brush. Um, if I need to clean off a lot out of my brush, I might use um, some newspaper. And the best thing about it, and that's a David Chen technique, is the best thing is that the paint doesn't come through on your fingers. I don't like paint on my fingers. I like paint on my board. And sometimes I might use a rag because a rag is useful just to get rid of um, something you don't want on the panel or I might, if it's a thick layer of paint, I might just scrape that back. And of course, always have a handy bag to be able to put all the rubbish and try and stay as neat and tidy as possible without paint all over me. And I think that's it. Okay, so we'll start off by laying out my palette. Since it's a limited palette, it's nice and easy to do that. So I have my darkest paint closest to me. So I've got ivory black and I've got cobalt blue. I haven't put out too much ivory black because I don't intend on using black too much. I'm running out of this one, but I've got a spare one. So this is Terra Rosa. I will get some more Terra Rosa at another break. Um, some yellow ochre. I can't believe this. It's not squeezing out properly. Okay. And some titanium white. Now with the white I try and squeeze out a lot and in a long string so that I can come in and touch the white because that's the one that I'll be touching the most more than likely as I'm mixing through. So ivory black, cobalt blue, terra rosa, yellow ochre and titanium white. And so I'm going from my dark to my light and this way I can um, I know the arrangement and it's important to have them arranged so that you can easily know where things are as you're working without much looking at what you've got. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll mix up a little puddle of Terra Rosa and Cobalt Blue into a more neutral colour. And I like using this better than some sort of earth colour, like raw umber or something like that. So I've got that and that's what I'll use for my initial marks. I'll use the viewfinder firstly uh, to be able to then size up the canvas and go across and look at what I want to capture of Mina and the surrounding. So I'll be using comparative, mainly comparative measurement. Uh, and sometimes I may also use alignments that go across um, So the first thing that I'm looking for are basically shapes. Firstly, there's the shape of Mina, who is in more of a positive shape, and then the negative shapes around her. So I want to consider both the positive and the negative shapes. I also want to make sure, and that's where I use, I can just run my, my brush across in this direction to see where the top of her head is and where it lands 
on my canvas. So I sight sized this to make sure that I fitted her in where her chin is and then where the bottom of the canvas is going to crow across her as well. So the first thing that I'll probably do is make a mark for the top. And that's just a mark, check it in a sight size manner. And then I have a look and see where her chin is. Make another mark. And generally, you can say for this size, the face is generally a hand span in normal, but I'm making the head this way. So I'm pretty close to the top, pretty close to the bottom, because I do want to have a little bit of a V-shape in that shape down through her neck. So I'm always coming back to the same spot that I'm standing at all the time, uh, because this is where I make all my assessments, all my judgments. This is where I'll um, make all my decisions as I'm painting throughout the whole painting. So once again, I'm looking through the viewfinder and looking for shapes and looking firstly for the big shape, the biggest shape I can see and seeing how that fits in to my, into the format of my panel. And to me, after figuring out the top, where her chin is, so basically the size of her face, uh, her portrait. Now I just want to see where the negative shapes fit. And possibly it could be across to there and across to here. That's where generally her shoulders are fitting. So she kind of makes a shape, a big shape that's coming across from here to here. And her hair actually kind of gives that impression as well. Some of those lines are not going to be used, they're going to be painted through and painted out, but I just generally want to make um, a big shape area. and mark that in using the viewfinder again another big shape would be coming down through here and down through there so i'm not actually wanting to draw the portrait in and then paint the portrait um, based on the drawing i just want these drawing marks to give me an idea where the big shapes, the negative shapes, the positive shapes all sit. And from here I'll, um, I'll continue on. So the next thing that I'm be looking at is just to see some other things like maybe where the hairline is. And I'm squinting my eyes to try and have a look generally where the shadow shapes are in her face and also maybe get some idea of where the major proportions of her face are. So um, I'll probably just double check with my brush and go across and I notice that Mina has the classical proportional divisions of from the bottom of her chin to the, to the bottom of her nose I have a measurement and then I compare that from the bottom of the nose to the top of her eyebrow is about the same distance then from the top of her eyebrows to the line of her hairline is also about the same so she's a third a third a third in sitting in that pose with her head facing straight forward so that's pretty much the classical uh, measurement sizes. Uh, there is a small amount, probably about 
a half or a little bit less than a half for the top to the top of her hairline that we can see there right now. So I can also then use site size and see where that all fits into my picture. So I've got the hairline sitting where that line is, then her eyebrows could be across here and all of this is malleable. So nothing is set in stone, everything can be changed. So now I check that that mark is pretty close and then I go and put a mark for where her, the bottom of her nose would be. Then I check that that mark is pretty close and then the bottom of her chin and then I'll actually just check it from here or I could actually even check it here by saying a third, a third and a third Mm, might be a little bit low but I can double check myself anyway and it's all movable in any case so basically I'm just going horizontally across and checking that I've got most of my marks in the general direction so um, so next one I want to have a look at is vertical alignments so basically from where I'm standing and looking at Mina I could have a vertical alignment all the way down through the face that way I can get some um, idea that things are aligning correctly and obviously I could check I could start to check angles from the corner of her nostril to the corner of her eye, but it's probably a little bit too early to be doing that. So I'm going to generally now eyeball a bit more of a shape of what's going on with her hair. And um, again, get a bit of a gestural idea here of what's going on down to her neck possibly this is all in the dark area so i'm not going to make too much of that and the back of her neck maybe put a few marks for where her shoulders are coming across when I'm looking at this even though her hair is in front of her in front of her shoulders I still consider the fact that she's going to have a shape that's going from one side to the to the other side I might just look at that through my vision my and make sure that I've got about what I wanted up there so basically then I could just mark a few bits of her hair in. Um, sorry. Mm. Okay, so I might just think about then plotting some of the dark shapes and leaving just bigger marks every decision that I'm making is from back here though that's why I keep stepping backwards and forwards so now the other thing that I didn't uh, describe was how far back I'm standing from the canvas so I'm standing, basically you should stand, if this is the diagonal distance of this canvas, then I should be three times back from that distance. So one, two, three, approximately to where I'm standing now. So I'm always coming back to this point, and then I look 
I make a decision and then I step forward and place whatever decision I'm making. I try not to, whilst I'm standing at the canvas, look across to place any marks because there's always going to be a distortion if I'm not coming back to the same spot. So it takes a bit of time to get used to. Uh, generally, before I do it, I'll check. I'll check through just coming straight across diagonally as well as I'll measure how far, whether her lips are halfway through that third. No, and they're not. So Mina would have... The lips are... If that's the chin, some people have their lips about halfway between those two points. Mina's is a little bit more to the upper side so I'll just place that mark just like that so that we have some idea I'm not going to draw lips in because I'm not drawing in lips I'm drawing shapes um, and I'm just still plotting the darker shadow area And then there's this light area. And the shape of this light area is kind of like an upside down triangle. Doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Not going for accuracy at all at this stage. I'm just plotting my way to try and get an idea because I will adjust everything as I go. The other thing I need to probably do at this stage is have a look at the width of her face. So I measure the width across and then I compare it to the height. So from the hair on one side to the hair on the other side across is the same as from her chin in light to the top of her hairline. So then I come across to here and I go across. So her hair has to be as wide as high and it's looking like so I pick a line somewhere there, from there to there, from here to there. So it's looking like I've got a bit of height somewhere along the line here. But that's okay because I will adjust that. So if we set a third, a third maybe, maybe this needs to be just a little bit. more to there but things maybe we'll adjust them as we go I'm not going to be um married to these lines at all actually but I do want to get the general shape and a bit of an idea. Now, some of the teachers that I've studied with would not be happy to see any marks at all on the canvas that look like lines. Um, but I've found for myself that I need some level of guidance with a few marks, but I never just paint to those lines. And sometimes I'll start off with no marks at all and just start off with massing in big shapes. So I do try and um, vary it up for myself so that it's not going to be... So it's going to be an interesting um, journey every time that I paint something. Um, let me see. So I might... So at this stage, 
I don't want to put anything more in. I've plotted out the general shape fitter on the canvas. I know that there's things that are not ideally 100% in place. I've plotted out the darks and the lights and the hair and paintings always have ugly stages, stages where you think oh my god where's that going, it's not going the way that I want but that's the beautiful thing about it's a beautiful thing about oil painting is that it's so malleable that you can adjust this as you're going along so as you can see I haven't put out any terps or any medium or anything like that because my very good friend and teacher Nicholas Chen noticed when I was painting that um, my paintings were going a little bit too watercolorish and that was because I was using too much medium and he suggested that I just paint with pure paint and so that's what I've been doing and it works better for me and I like it better. So that's what I'll be doing here today as well. And um, yeah. Okay, so what I'll do next is I will just use this same mixture to just block in some of the shadow areas first before I do anything. So since I'm not since I'm not diluting anything, because normally people will use some terps or Gamsol um, odorless terps to thin things out first and do a layer and that's good because as you're working that terps is actually dissipating into the air which is not good <laughs> from a health perspective but um, it means that your layer of paint can start to dissipate so since I'm not doing that I'll just be using a very thin layer to start off with to block in the dark masses and hopefully shape it all up a little bit more and I'm not going to be I'm not going to be a hundred percent accurate in the initial state because my main objective at this point in time is to quickly cover the canvas with something that is thin um, <clears throat> thin and getting rid of the white of the canvas is my main objective at this point Even though I'm using a little brush, which I don't normally, only for maybe putting in some marks in, um, I can still easily move that paint about. Oh, this is something I didn't do. I didn't cover shape in the neck. And I'm massing in all that shadow area of the side of her face together with the hair for now. Leaving the light area white for now. People use the rag to take paint off. I try and um, I try not to use a rag if I can help it, uh, because I try and avoid touching the paint. But I might just get rid of that 
I don't want that line in there as such. So with the eyes, I generally try and think of them as a pair of sunglasses and just mass it all in. This left hand, left side eye is probably a little bit more light on it, so I'll just not mess it in. Um, I'll still leave some of the light through there, but I want some indication of where the eye socket sits. Because once I put in the darks, I can see where my shapes are at, like the shape of the forehead. Um, can probably wipe back a little bit. Maybe I was a little bit too enthusiastic up there. Um, check. Always coming back to the same spot. Check across. The full. But maybe it is. Anyway, we'll figure out something. Do you need a working with um with a life model? You do have to give them breaks. <laughs> um, so we might have to just give Mina a bit of a break. Okay. So at this stage, what I could do which you may not see in the camera, but I might use a mirror, as you can see here. I'll use a mirror to check for shape, mainly right now is what I'm interested in. So I hold, I don't know whether you can see it there, but anyway, I hold the mirror against my nose to give me a different perspective because sometimes when you're looking at something you just get so bogged so bogged down with what you're looking at that you think that your brain doesn't register what's going on with what you're looking at so there's plenty of ways of checking it you can check it so that you can see the image upside down and then this way of checking with upside down is a good one because because it's kind of closer to sight size um, I can check directly across and look at it upside down directly across and I can see some differences obviously there's always differences until you shape it up to the way that you want it so I'll choose a slightly bigger brush now. Um, you know, I might just get you to move your bottom across because I can't see the other, no, I can't see that yet. Yeah, so just align yourself up a little bit better, yeah. Because I could see the, the other side of the chair a bit more. Okay. All right, so what I might do now is just put, as, as my objective right at this second is to cover the canvas, get rid of the white. I've got something of an image there. I'm now going to mix up something for behind Mina's left, left shoulder. I might even just put that little indication, I think that's where the chair top is, and so this is the chair behind Mina, this one big mess, I'll sort that out later. So cobalt blue for the back drop with a little bit of 
kind of like a bluey greeny and it's more greeny because of the light source. So the colour of the light source is a warm light source and being a warm light source it's going to affect what's around it. Tiny bit of white, not too much white because if you put too much white into mixtures it's always going to just um, take the colour away. So I want to keep the colour or the chroma um, higher rather than bleached. So I'm basically shutting my eyes down to have a look at Mina's image to get a better idea of the shapes without details because details are the distracting factor and you don't want details so I put some down and it's probably a bit too too blue maybe I need a little bit more yellow ochre or maybe even a little bit lighter but I'm always just it's always in degrees of adjustments but we've got to put something down at the beginning and we're putting it down thin enough to be able to adjust it and I'm going to avoid doing the using the black because there are certain areas in her hair and in the shadow behind her hair on against her neck that are probably dark the darkest that I may use some may use some black into but for now I'm just going to keep it like this. The way I'm applying the paint is basically in every direction. I don't want to be painting a house and going up and down. Um, I'm going in every direction and even going over and particularly going over lines and things that I don't want to come through. So I can darken that at any time. And the other side of Mina, well, today this is coming across a lot more. The other side is more of a green golden. I'm not mixing up too much paint at this stage because I don't want it to be too thick. Because Alaprima is wet into wet and you need to actually stage your way through the thickness of the paint. So I'm literally just scrubbing things on, even going through the chair. Looking at that negative shape now um, of the background against her hair, her shoulders, even if a little bit of that green blue comes down there to shape that up. Okay, so I put that brush down and I'm going to select another brush because what I want to do is I want to probably darken her hair a little bit and most of my brushes that I'm using are larger brushes, sixes, eights, ten and I tend to use large brushes at the very beginning to make sure that I'm not being fussy. So ultramarine, no not ultramarine, cobalt blue and terra rosa. I'm avoiding white as I said at this stage so this should be darker for the hair. One side of me this hair is warmer so it has a feeling of ready through her hair 
Now I'm not going to be painting once again down the way that hair flows so I'm actually painting against the form just to darken it. Sometimes I do paint that way as well but every direction that you can is the best thing to do. So then I'll definitely be adding either more blue to make it darker into that mixture. Because the other side of her hair is going to be darker. Always stepping back, having a look at where shapes are at. Only making decisions from back here. Now I use my brush to check for angles as well because I can see that this is taking an angle that goes more like that. And then it comes back in this direction. But then also it's joining up with the chair behind her which I can work on later. I can definitely put this dark under here. check because I know that width should be equal to the height from the chin to the top of the hair. It's kind of looking pretty close. And I may have to move some of that as well. This I can definitely see that the angle comes in a lot more there. So I'm looking at the negative and positive shape around her face. I might divide some of this up. coming underneath, the underneath of her nose goes to the top of the chair, so, okay, um, so I might just use, no, I won't, I'll, um, get another brush. And the first thing that I think I'll do here at this stage is I'll mix up the dark, the shadow side of the skin. So some cobalt blue, some terra rosa. It's almost the same as the hair side, but I'm going to put a lot more white into this. So it's kind of like, because this is basically primary colours, so I've got a blue, a red, a yellow, and then I've got a white for lightening, and a black for making it deeper dark. Um, so it's kind of like a purpley look, but Nina has got probably a lot more warmth in that shadow area so I'm going to mix up a little bit more red into that mixture. <clears throat> a bit more white 
because it's got to be lighter. It's got to be dark, but it's got to be lighter than the dark of her hair. <clears throat> I'm not happy with the shape of of um, the forehead, so I need to really be mindful of that. Uh, so what I'll do with this dark is just um, work my way through the dark area again. Even though I've put something down, try and be a little bit more <coughs> definitive about those shapes. <coughs> I think Mina has a, a different shape to her forehead than what I'm showing. Or maybe it could be... The fact that her <coughs> her hair is changing the shape, but since she's got a fringe, I'll have to deal with that after I've got the skin tone in underneath it. But for now, I'll just go across and double check that I've got... placements. So I'm not painting this in um, <clears throat> following my lines. As a matter of fact, I try and challenge myself to understand that the lines that I probably first placed in my first assessment are wrong. And um, but I had nothing on the canvas to start off with. Now I have something to adjust, and I think that that's an important understanding, and also the understanding that. Um, Paintings have their ugly phases, and you've got to work your way through that.
So constantly checking the shape. And as we have breaks in between um, models do their best to get back into the same position, but they're only human, so there might be slight movements and you just got to cope with it. Even with the hair, you know, that, that has its own um, movement and changes and so you stop somewhere where you actually like the shape that that hair may be creating. And I added a little bit of a little bit of um, yellow ochre and white into that mixture. Um, since I'm still blocking in, I'm basically not mixing up too much um, because it's actually coming onto the canvas quite easily and nice. So until I'm actually finishing some things off. Um, that's when I will mix up more and more paint. But I'm still always adjusting the shapes and the drawing in, uh, that's the whole process actually, a process of adjustment. You put something down and then you adjust it. Um, and you get plenty of plenty of exercise moving backwards and forwards. So now I'll um have a bit of a look at mixing a lighter, well, that was a bit too intense, um, mixing a lighter skin tone for the light of the skin areas. And um, <coughs> even though some of my teachers like Paul McDonald Smith will actually already have um, 20 brushes, one for every tone, totally isolated from the other. I tend to, um, I tend to actually at least stick to maybe the hair, the darker the face, the background, um, the light. So I'll go up and down on the one brush, lighter and darker, but always for that same, um, for that same area that I'm working on. And I find that it actually limits washing brushes at the very end, millions of them. But um, I totally understand having a new brush for every colour is the ideal. However, the other thing that I learned when I was in Russia is that sometimes you want some broken colour into your paintings. So sometimes you want to mix a bit of the other colour into your into your picture so that everything is not just a homogenized color and i actually like that idea and i like that approach and uh therefore you know just at least keeping keeping your brushes in an isolated manner for the areas that you're working in is what works for me 
so um yes yeah, so now i've got a new brush and i'll do a mixture of a mid-tone of the light area so i don't want to bleach out the color in her face immediately as a matter of fact i want to reserve that for highlights and things like that and the reason why some people can't get their highlights to zing is because their skin colour behind it is too light so if the skin colour was um, was a little more towards the mid-tone or the darker area then they'd get their highlight to zing quite well so <clears throat> I'll use some yellow ochre and a lot more white obviously in here but not bleached. A tiny bit of that terra rosa, maybe a tiny bit more. Um, terra rosa kind of mixes up into a nice pinky tone. Um, Mina, because of that light, the skin tones are very light. Um, translucent at times depending on the light if you've got a cool light on Mina because I've painted Mina before if you've got a cool light all her skin tones look translucent and they have more blue and more green and you know depending on her surroundings that's all reflecting into her skin tone as well like if you're painting in natural light since we're painting with an artificial light that is a warm light it's also adding that warm thing to her skin so it's going to be a little bit more ochre-y and generally in a portrait <clears throat> there are different zones that you can also consider in the back of your mind aside from looking at her and seeing what feedback you're getting back by by looking but generally the zones in a portrait are Generally, the forehead area is going to be more ochre -y. The lower part below the nose is going to be more ochre -y. And across the cheeks is going to be more warm pink. And um, so you can have a bit of an idea with that. Or, as Paul McDonald Smith would say, you just look and see what your subject that you're looking at is telling you and it will tell you what it should be. Um, but I can try this and I'm going to try it on an edge over here and that looks a bit warm and maybe a bit um, too much terra rosa for now as a mid-tone colour um, but I don't mind it being that darker tone because I can then later on put some lighter over it but once again I'll just try and shape it up Maybe it is a bit dark, but um, it'll allow me to put lighter on top of that. Even though I would like to start getting into all different sorts of colour and all that sort of stuff right now because I can see a lot more than what I'm putting down I am better off the strategy is to to cover as much as you can of the light area with a lighter that you've selected before then you can adjust it later towards more ochre or pinker but at least right now my aim is just to put a base down
and look beyond that fringe and try and see the shape underneath. that I see a lot is that people leave all these little edges so either try and paint through them and yes you might get a bit of the other color dragged through a little bit but that's okay um, and paint against the form because Then you're not focusing too much on trying to get detail. We're trying to get the right shapes first and always. Even painting into the hair. Now if I paint a little bit too much and I get a bit too much on my brush of the other colour, I can always just wipe that off as well and then go back into the mixture and mix a little bit more and then continue to paint Got a little bit much leave it around there like that but I'll get rid of this but really I need to use the dark and this is the beauty about having colour at least in a similar tone or the same tone I can go back to my shadow colour and have a look at the shape a little bit better and come from that edge to work that shape in a bit more. So even though this side of Mina's skin, the neck rolling into the shoulder is a lot lighter as I look at it from back here. It's still in the dark side or the shadow side of the figure so it cannot be as light as any of these other areas. So I can adjust that a little bit later but for now I'm just going to continue with this then I'll put her top in after we have a little bit of a break for her. So, um, I should get rid of the rest of that white area back here because then I can start pushing things around I think it's generally generally looking close close is good doesn't have to be perfect now anyway and is it ever perfect it's our impression and you know, you could have a good day of painting, you could have a not so good day of painting, so you have to accept those things as well. 
Um, so now the beauty about having a separate brush from, for things, I can just pick up that brush and make adjustments to the shape. Um, I haven't put her lips in, I haven't, and also I shouldn't even suggest that I'm going to put lips in, I'm going to put shapes in that area to define those. It's hard to get away from um, saying lips, nose, eyes, whatever, but if you can train yourself to actually see them as shapes, that's the best idea, because then you won't be putting your own perception of what lips should look like or or anything like that. Just keeping it quite generalised. Sometimes I'll use a rag, sometimes. I don't like using it because I think I said before, I don't like getting paint on my hands. I don't like painting with gloves either because somehow I feel removed. Um, okay, so for now I might just even though the light is falling on her chest a lot more, I'm not going to make that as light as what it is because realistically you've got to think about where do you want your viewer to be looking at and you want to be looking at her face, not her chest. And at the moment her chest is the brightest that's going on here. So... I'm not going to make it as light as what I'm seeing it to be. So I just mix up a little bit more. I'm obviously not going to make it overly dark. And on top of that, I can't really even make a final decision about it until I have everything on the canvas because it's all about relationships it's all about relationships um, and I can't judge relationships until I have everything down on the canvas So if I want to make this lighter in any case, I can just put it on top of that. Um, <clears throat> this light area here keeps moving a little. And I don't want to have too many hard edges. As Paul has always stated, keeping things soft, soft as you can, for as long as you can will actually make the job easier when you're actually finishing off painting. So I'm going to go back into the dark area. Um, <clears throat> I might just even grab a new brush. Most of my brushes, the larger ones, are actually hog's hair brushes. They're a little bit stiffer and they're probably better for putting on paint quickly um, and scrubbing it in. And some of my brushes I've adopted from other people are synthetics, like Studio Scalier uses synthetic brushes, um, smaller brushes for smaller shapes. But generally I work with large brushes um, for the majority of my process. Okay, so I'm going to actually make a slightly darker, even with a tiny bit of that black. I haven't used much of, much of my um, palette space, which... So I always add a little... Uh, that can be a little bit overpowering. I didn't want it that dark, that warm. 
So I always add cools, two cools and a warm or two warms and a cool to be able to get there and generally you'll find that because I'm using primary colours that <clears throat> you need a little bit of everything in the mix generally. Um, but it's all by proportion. So this is for her top that's kind of coming across like that. And that might even create this other shape into the dark of her hair in there. And definitely on this side where it's in the shadow area. And I might just put it on a bit more solidly there. And it's just a little bit lighter, obviously, in the light area. But um, for now, I might just leave it close to this darker colour. You can always adjust that. And I'm not going to get too caught up with that patterning going on in her shirt but it's kind of like a um, I won't dirty my shadow side brush just use another brush it's kind of like a um, bit of a grey it's going to be a lighter grey on her shoulder on the left hand side and then it's going to be a darker grey because I'm just I'm not looking for specifics right now not looking for specifics for a, lo a very long time actually um, that could be a bit dark for that side but it could be okay for this side and it still could be a little bit just to get rid of that part of that white anyway um yeah so i might make a little offshoot from that with the same brush because i'm just going up up in tone and i want this to have a little bit more light on it because that's the way that the light is falling and there's a little bit of a dark but so the only thing that I want to now do possibly is work on that chair just to see how it's going to fit in here. I'm not going to delineate exactly the... And it's a bit... It's a bit solid. So sometimes you've got to think about whether you... If it's going to be in the background, it should be less solid. I might just wipe some of that off a little. Or I might run the blue background through it as well. And then I can bring the hair lighter on against that dark bit. Um, so I'm nearly to the point where I can start to really work with things. the chair on this side. I know you can see through it, it's got a dark part to it, but I'm just going to put that in 
as a mass rather than rather than as anything specific. Besides, it's not my point of interest, so maybe right now it's been way too attracting, not giving me the depth that I probably want to capture. Get rid of this halo, and I'll have to deal with the, where those lips are, and put a mark there so that I'll be ready to look at relating everything. Get rid of this hard mark. So in a painting you want soft, lost edges, found edges, a whole variety of different edges mainly to make the painting interesting and not boring that everything is looking hard or everything is looking soft. The main thing is continuously adjusting the shapes. So right now I'm looking at where Nina's just tiny bit of the earlobe is so that I can adjust the shape a little bit more because I'm only seeing I'm only seeing a tiny bit of her ear. I can also just at this stage probably this distance from here to here looks a little bit long in the painting. So I can probably bring this up. lip is always going to be darker because the light is coming from above um, so you can see that the top lip is darker and I'll probably make just a mixture of once again Terra Rosa and Cobalt and that's way too dark in this mixture right now because those two red and blue will make a purpley looking now I've made it too red. Anyway, I'm just putting in some indicators right now before I can adjust it. So just So if I can just indicate now, well the first thing I want to do actually is have a look at alignments. So the corner of her lip on the left hand side is basically vertically aligned to the corner of her eye, her left eye, close enough to so the mark that I've made here is a little bit too wide already. But as I said, we can adjust all this. And you don't want to go too dark at the beginning anyway. So I think I had gone a bit too dark. I can get some of my skin tone back. And just adjust this a little bit. Looks, looks painted in, <laughs> drawn in, 
But anyway, as I said, all, I'm going to adjust things as I go. And you don't want it to be too harsh either, which is looking harsh at the moment. So that's okay. Then mixing up a lighter pinkier version because the bottom lip's catching all the light. And I'm not ever going to get as pinky as what I'm seeing out there or because basically I'm limited by my colours. So I'm only ever going to get what I can by the paint that I'm using. But anyway, I'm just going to put something across there like that. don't want to fuss with it too much, but I can at least say that that's maybe a little dark. But I'll, I'm going to leave that because I'm going to come back to it, obviously. I guess this is just a placeholder to work from. Anyway, the most important thing for me at the moment is to make sure that I've got it close enough to where it should be. So from the light of the bottom of the chin, measuring to the middle of that her lips and comparing it to where it goes to the top of the nose. Um, not the top of the nose, it goes to the top of the ball of her nose. For now I think I'll be just leaving it there, but I will adjust a few things around it. Like there's always a little dark underneath there. And Now that I've covered most well, now that I've covered all of the all of the canvas I can just have a look and see um, the main thing I'm looking at is looking at the shapes of course so I mean, this hair has a gesture that falls down and over her shoulder and right now that's not looking like that's what's happening on the canvas but um so I can then go back to my background color and mix up a new lot and I'm not going to paint the little patterns or anything I just want to get closer to the tone that it is because if I squint my eyes and look at my canvas I've got it too bright too light so that means if it's too bright means that I need to add a bit of red into it to kill off that brightness make it a bit dull because it is a, a dull color and I want it to drop into the background so this is duller and I can use this then to adjust the shape of the hair. Work there. And because it's a limited palette um, and I want the dark background to be darker than the hair or than the highlight in the hair I should say. Uh, I can just go straight into 
shaping that up. And that looks a lot better to me now. But I don't want to, again, I don't want to paint as if I'm painting a house up and down. I want to make a mark maybe and move back. Get some more paint. Make another mark. And it doesn't necessarily have to follow the same direction as the previous mark. And it doesn't mean just because I'm darkening that area that I want to darken everything equally. Maybe I might want a little variation into it. As a matter of fact, this is what I would be asking for at the Russian Academy. I don't want just big flat areas and maybe I don't want that either. And even if I go straight into that chair, it allows me then to shape up and ease off that edge. Might want a little bit more. I might put a little bit more light into it later. Just depends on how everything else is travelling. Soften that edge by layering that colour over that. The light is still coming through, but I still have a chance to adjust it again. Now somehow I've gotten, this is a problem. <laughs> You could get your colours mixed up easily, but maybe I was using this same one anyway for the more greener light area on the other side. So I'm still working on the other side on the background. And I'm adding more ochre because it's more yellow and I still didn't want it to be overly light. And then I'll, um, I guess the next, where do you go to next um, is always a question that everyone asks. I might just put a bit of this background showing through that chair in little pieces. It's like painting a little bit of sky coming through the trees. Um, yeah, so where do I go to next? I'm still needing to shape up the hair around her face and so that's the biggest difference. I guess that's that's the question. Where do I go to next? It's always going to be to the biggest difference that you can see and as Paul McDonald Smith always says, you know, the, the um, painting will tell you where you need to go. And so there you go. So I'm going to go to the darker hair again and work on that and then I'll relate the light of the skin to that. I'm using more black obviously because Nina does have a black warm hair. So now I want to be a lot more careful with the shapes. Ah, there goes being careful. <laughs> that might make up a bit of her, a bit of her um, fringe. 
that she loves. So I just wanted to shape this up a bit more. And the other side is much darker than what I've got going on. Yeah. So if I go against the form, I can then also collect collect the um, the brush marks with the form. I want to make a little bit of a lighter and all this I can just mix up, collect it all up together and I could try up here a little bit. It's probably not light enough for those highlighty areas. But I'll use it down through here. And oh, that didn't make much of a difference. A bit more light. But if, if I add white, I always add a little bit of chroma from something like the next one up. The other thing is not to get too bogged down in one area because you need to move around the whole canvas equally. So the next area that I think needs to be looked at is um, a lighter area of the skin tone. So I'll mix that up. And I 
and I'm thinking about the pinkier area of her cheek. Maybe that's way too light because I've got that one beside me to compare it to. And I should make a decision from back here first before I approach my canvas. So, uh, it's not even sitting that clearly on top there. So the tones are too close. Mix up another one. Just more pinky. And it's still pretty close, but I'm adding a bit more thickness to the paint. Probably use that here. Okay. And more ochre into her chin and forehead. As well as a tiny bit cooler. And some areas around her nose and mouth. And then underneath that, um, underneath the fringe, it's a lot warmer. So we'll add a little bit of that first before we do anything about the fringe. Even on this side, it's warmer. And of course, there's the reflected light under her chin. That looks warmer. even warmer in the corners of her eyes. Um, just a little minute meter and then we'll have a break.
Okay, we'll have a break now. You know. Okay, so um, as I said, it's just a constant, um, a constant shaping and reshaping, applying dark and lights. Uh, I want to have a look at this nose because I think it's not following what I'm seeing based on the fact that um, the shadow area is too small. Hang on. So, coming across there, and it is darker. It's always a darker area um, because that form is going in. And it's literally a dance between you and this canvas. I might just put two marks where I think the pupils should be. It's too small. to turn a little bit leaner. You need to shift again. No, not your feet, your whole bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. So I just want to see if the eyes and the sockets are sitting in place.
Still have her chin a bit, I mean her cheeks a bit too full. Uh, I might just come in a little bit. Maybe a bit too much. So I'll go back out a bit. Anyway, it's too much of a hard edge. Whenever, whenever you have a very light against a very dark, it's easy to create a hard edge. If it's painting, you don't want hard edges if you can help it. Well, you do want some hard edges, but not everywhere. There's a lot of soft forms in the face, so you don't want to make them hard and... Because hardness creates... Um, doesn't create flattery. We want to flatter our model as much as possible. Right, Mina? Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, because it's um, because it is a la prima, and you're painting wet into wet, you can sometimes push the paint out of the way rather than paint on top of it by just the flick of your brush. I'm a little bit happier with with the shape there. that has disappeared again. Um, can bring this down a bit.
with, I'm looking for a soft brush. So I think that's the main thing about painting wet into wet. If you're going to put a um, lighter area over the top of this wet paint, then you need to have softer brushes that aren't going to pick up pick up that um, paint that you've already delivered onto the canvas. Um, so that's what I will try and do in a second. Didn't like that bit, but it might be okay. I'll work around it. Okay, so um, softer brush, but not too big. I still haven't gone to really tiny brushes. Um, if I can help it, I won't. And I'll put a new mixture with a lot of white a bit of cat yellow not cat yellow yellow ochre tiniest bit of uh, maybe that's already too pink maybe not but it's lighter than anything else that I've got on my palette, but not bleached white. So I want to have a look at... Oh, the other thing is the way I hold my brush. I don't want to hold it like I'm going to draw. I want to hold it like I'm just going to apply some paint. So I want it lighter here. light and I should probably wipe my brush after I deliver the paint so that it's not going to pick up any other colors and change the color that I want on there so squinting I can see that there's a lighter area And trying to make sure that you only touch the canvas and then move away rather than two strokes which is so easy easy to um, to want to do I'll just put this as the lightest tone on the nose just so I can assess it. So I want to get a bit more colour into it. Thank you. 
Sometimes when you get too much paint on your brush you need to wipe it back because otherwise it becomes very difficult to manage it with too much paint. area I think it's a bit too washed out I can either scrape it off so that it's not such a huge build-up or I can paint around it and see what happens don't want to do is lose the form that I've created of the fullness of the cheek because she does have a full sort of cheek And there's always um there's always a very warm spot in there um it's warm but it's dark and also in the nostrils which i haven't actually put in as yet but um we'll see maybe this might be too warm i'm not sure
and also in the corners of her eyes and I should probably switch to a smaller brush uh, but sometimes then I want to draw so and here I don't want to draw I want to try and shape it up That looks terrible. So I better work on that one. love Mina's nose but such a challenge to get those shapes going and it's backwards and forwards Small brush for in fact be pinching her nose a little bit too much so I need to widen it a little bit You can also use a mulch stick um, to steady yourself and that's pretty useful at times but it works better if you're sitting down rather than walking backwards and forwards but sometimes I do just use I just use my hand and arm to brace it so that um, I can steady my hand.
everything should be viewed anyway from a distance. If it works from a distance, it should work up close. Or if, but the main thing is to make it work from a distance. That's why viewing it from back there is the best way to view it. Are you hanging in there, Melina? Mm. Oh, I just want to I'll have it one more break quickly and then We are getting a bit of um, light coming from the skylights now. Mm, so it's creating a bit more light on one on the side that should be more dark, but in the in the in the Russian school, that's it. Finally get it out. In the Russian school it was always like this. The challenge was the, the challenge was the natural light continuously streaming in and creating beautiful light but changing the skin tones. And you had to deal with it. This is too much of a drawing mark. Still making this dark but lighter dark. It's kind of coming down in this area 
And um, can we just have one quick break and then have another look, Nina? Okay, beautiful. So I'm just going to cut into this a little bit so that uh, and yes, that fringe. That dreaded fringe. <laughs> um, just need to put a bit of warm dark underneath that first. Still playing with my big brush. do first is um, get a bit of a higher brighter part to the hair to bring that out a lot more Let's see what this is like Okay, for that area. Pretty good. So the fringe is going to be a challenge because <laughs> I don't want to actually make it look like it's not part of her hair. So, and really I should do it in one go. And I'm just building up a few darks first.
And I don't want to cover everything that I've got underneath either. Because then it doesn't look natural. Sometimes it's a good idea to practice your where you want that stroke to go either in your mind or on top of the painting but don't touch it until you're ready to go ah. otherwise it's going to look all this straggly things it somehow. And then you've got to decide how much you want to put in and how much you want to leave out because you don't have to put everything in. Sometimes you have to go back in with some skin and make things softer or Just leave that for a moment.
And sometimes you have it just right and then you wreck it and then you've got to fix it. Before you can get it back better than before. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Missing something there. Now I'm getting all confused. Which brush is which? That's what happens at the end. Start to get all confused. Okay, so I'm just going to leave some areas a bit more sketchy and put a few finishing touches.
I don't want to do too much over here with that top. Um, maybe put a bit of light, but not competing with anything else. And down here, a little dab for her earring. But I can't make that too dark because it's on the dark side of yeah, the dark side of um of the painting, but it's a lighter catching light. Even if it's just a little dip dab, it's I'm not gonna render it out um totally. I mean there's still lots of things to be done always the beginning of every uh, at the end of every painting session you always wish you had more time and um, it's not the way it works though the model eventually has to go home <laughs> but it's so good when you do self portraits because you can beat yourself to death <laughs> being around yourself and you don't need to be thinking about time too much anyway just a few abstracty bits that mainly just add interest um possibly uh, and of course Mina wore that necklace particularly because she likes me to put that in a little bit so I'm just going to not make it drawn but suggested and sometimes I think it's just better to flick your wrist in putting it in because we don't want to take attention Sometimes it gets lost and found again. Hmm. So there's some sort of a little dark. And then there's a brighter brighter spot or oh, maybe a bit more orangey hmm. maybe it's a bit catchy shadow behind it, just a touch. A couple of little shadows. That'll be fine. And Oh, 
you say for the rest of the afternoon, Nina? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, there's so much more that I can fix, but. Somewhere along the line, you have to call it a day. This line here is a bit overwhelming. I don't know how much more of that fringe I can take. I'm only kidding. But there is a bit of a cast shadow that I can just maybe. Just one more, just one more little bit. Uh, maybe that's it now because otherwise I'm going to lose some of the things that I was happy with but sometimes coming against collecting some of the form that wasn't and that you didn't put down in the same direction in the end gives it a little bit more form so overall Hmm. Just one more thing. Thanks, Mina. Just one more thing. I think this is too high. Maybe. Ha. Ah.
high now. Okay, so so I'm checking this side through the back of the neck to this side, and realistically, they both need to align. So maybe just um, get rid of some of that. And this is when I love paint because I can just push it around. The hardest bit I think is when you first start and there's nothing on the canvas and you can't push it around and and um, yeah. So I think pretty much we're done for now anyway this session.